Okay, so theoretically, I'm now recording this. So what I'm going to do is I want to do a quick little demo again about around building our gargoyle. So we're going to take some clay. I'm going to do a quick little bit of wedging to get the clay ready. Uh, one of the things I'm doing in here today is just preparing clay for you guys to use. Um, but what I want to do here, hmm, this camera does not seem to want to focus. Hello. Nope. Shoot. I don't know what I'm going to be able to do about this. Focus is up here. Does not necessarily focus down on the table, but we're going to work with it. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wedge up some clay. Make sure that it's good and ready. Again, you're looking for a head that's about the size of a fist. And there's a couple of different approaches to this. But what I want you guys to try and do, remember I said we had to make sure that it was thin enough that we didn't end up with hair, air pockets. So what I want you to do here, I'm just going to start with a ball, much like I did last time. I'm going to pinch and roll. And basically, I'm going to start much the same way as if I was going to be making a pinch pot. Except this time, essentially what I'm going to do, just flattening that, because I'm going to join this together with another pinch pot to form the base of what I'm going to make. And in my case, I'm just going to use this. I'm going to get another ball of clay. I'm making this a little bit larger so you guys can see what's going on. Wedge it up a little if need be. You guys can wedge on your work boards. Again, I'm going to put my thumb in. I'm working the clay around. Uh, this must be somebody's clay from last class. It's a little bit shorter. You can see it's already breaking up. That's going to be fine. This is going to have a chance to rest anyway. So, it's a little bit bigger. So there I have roughly two halves. Now what I want to do here is I'm going to slip and score this. So I'm going to dip this in the water with the comb. And I really, because I want a good join here, I really want to rough this up. I want to rough this up on both sides. So you can see that's really quite textured at this point. I'm going to make sure that this is wet. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to push these together. So I'm making essentially a hollow ball. Now, once this is done, I want to work this seam so that I know that it is well sealed. So I'm going to work it in one direction. I'm going to pinch it if I want. That's all the way around. I can use my rib. I can use any one of the tools that I have to make this seem as firm as possible. Now we are doing a monster head. So if you want to start with a perfect sphere, you can. It's a gargoyle doesn't have to have human proportions. If you want to think about human proportions, well, I don't think you've ever met anybody who has a perfectly round head. Humans are a bit more oblong. But once this is set, now I have a hollow sphere that I can use as the base. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, ask, as you move it, you can feel it's kind of resistant to being moved. And that's largely because there is an air pocket inside of it. So here I'm tapping the bottom and sort of tilting it back. 
So this would be the back of the head. This would be the front head. This would be the face. So I can start bringing it in on a chin. If I want, I can start building up for a nose. And the clay will respond a little differently because of that air pocket. And take a little bit here. My hands are a little bit stickier than I would like. I can start building up a brow ridge. And again, when the time comes, I'm going to... Well, oh, this clay is wet enough. It doesn't even want to come apart now. So I can start building up a brow ridge. I think when I come back into this, I might want to add horns to the brow ridge since we are going for that kind of monster look. So here we have a start. Now remember, the eye sockets go in. I'm trying to push these in. Now, depending on how much clay you left, you may be able to go in here and gouge them out. I'm just going to start with a push. Hmm. Kind of want to continue that brow ridge up to the nose. So bring that up. When it comes to the eyes, you may want to do recessed eyes. You may want to do big eyes. I think I want to make this a big nostril. And again, we're going to start using our tools once we figure out sort of rough in our shape. Um, don't have much in the way of cheekbones here right now. But again, this might be a monster more than a person. If I want to build this out into a snout or something, as opposed to a normal human face, again, if I'm doing any significant adding, I want to score the surface. I want to score my surface, make sure it's nice and wet. That produces the slip or slurry that we need so that this, oops, that clay is short. Oh, maybe this, this will become like a duck beak or something. So I'm just actually pulling this off. Hmm. Huh. I kind of like the idea of a duck beak. I'm not quite sure. And again, you guys have the week to explore these gargoyle forms or these monstrous forms. You can do whatever you want with them. But I just wanted to point out that one of the best good approaches is to start with that hollow form made of like two pinch pots. And also do some fun sort of carving out. We can approach the eyes like that as well. And if we want, instead of just pushing it, we can carve it. Give ourselves some really recessed eye sockets before we go in there and put in some eyeballs, which are just like little balls of clay. Can also add spikes later. Whatever we want. So there's the beginnings. When you're all done, what you're going to do is you're going to open this up again. So on the bottom, remember, we want to make sure that we don't we can get air through this whole thing. So here, I'm just going to open this up, peel this away, so that we have that nice big open space in there, and that'll also help with the drying process. And at this point, I could even, if you take it like this, I could build another coil or a pinch pot. I could start building a coil off here and then shape it to form neck and the shoulders. Anyways, hopefully this gives you guys a little bit more in the way of a technique or direction that you can use when you go to building this. 
Remember, we want to have this area inside the head hollowed out. If it is if the clay is any thicker than, say, like the thickness of your thumb, you can see that's about the same width there. Um, thicker than that, it's going to be problematic when it comes to drawing and firing. Anyways, I hope you guys have a great week. I look forward to seeing you when I get back.